Hello, welcome back to Fred in the Shed and another Nano VLA video. Before I get started, I would like to thank everybody that's left comments on these Nano VLA videos. You've really, really helped me. Obviously, this is all new to me. I'm learning and hopefully you're learning with me. So I'd like to say a very, very big thank you for all the comments. I uh, really uh, have enjoyed re reading those. I'll just answer a couple of little queries that people have uh, asked me. Firstly, when I tested these little cheap fake one, uh, 771 antennas, people said, would I test the standard Bofung antenna? And yeah, I'll do that. I'm gonna do that on this video. I did briefly do it on the first video, but yeah, on this video, we'll be testing both of these fake antennas and then we will be comparing them to the standard Bofung antennas that came with my two UV5Rs. So yes, we'll be doing that. So stay tuned, that'll be coming up on this video. Another question was, people said, would I be able, could I test these antennas on uh, two different bandwidths? Yeah, that's no problem. So on this, this video, we'll be specifically looking at the two meter bands. That's at 100 and, around about 145 megahertz and see how these antennas do on two meters. And then we'll be going to 70 centimeters, which is what, 430 to 440, 445, something like that. Um, I'm, I'm more specifically interested in the PMR frequencies because that's where I use these radios and that's 446 megahertz. So I'm interested in the SWR to see if it's safe to use at 446. But yeah, I will be dropping down. Well, I've set the nano here. Um, I'm gonna, I've set this at a lower range. I think I've gone from about oh, what have we gone? 100 to, I think it's uh, 550. So it will be showing, it should hopefully show two different peaks because these are dual band antennas and we can compare them on sort of both sets of frequencies. So that's not a problem. And then finally, a, um, a few people have asked me, would I do a cross comparison test? Would, would I use a standard analog SWR meter to sort of see how the nano compares against an SWR meter? Um, I've only got, I've got two Satagi, I think they're, TM treble nine meters. I've only got two Satagi analog meters. And to be honest, I don't think they're of the greatest quality. I mean, they're fine for CB. So to put the Nano against those, um, I don't know that, what, if that's really gonna prove anything, because it might just bring the Satagi meters, their quality into question. Right, you remember on the first video that I used a little stand to test these antennas and a little patch lead. And as I said, I, I'm only learning, I'm, I'm sort of learning as I go along. And people came back and said, no, that's not, the, that's not the right way to test it. What you needed to do was to attach the antennas straight onto the meter. So yep, yeah, I've gone out and bought a little sort of adapter coupler there. That's fine, got that in. And that's what we're gonna be doing on this video. I've already put used a little sort of uh, caps here and I've configured this. Everything has been sort of configured and adjusted and calibrated. Okay, so here we go. This will be the first of the tests. I've tried to get the reflections down as much as possible and I'll be going on to manual focus as well. So yeah, the difference between the last test is that obviously the antenna is vertically connected to the meter and I'll be sort of holding the meter in my hands which hopefully will sort of act as a ground plane. This is how you would normally hold the radio. And just to remind you all, the, the lower the peak there on the meter, the lower the SWR. And of course, what you want is, a, is the lowest SWR possible. The higher the SWR, that means that's more reflected power when you transmit being coming back to the radio. Okay, well, here we go. So let's do the two meter first. So again, we're looking for about 145 megs. And it has got a low peak. And let's go down to the bottom of that peak. Well, that's got an SWR of 1.5, which is fine, but unfortunately that, that's showing 167 megs. So that's well out of tune for the two meter band. So if I take it up to 145, which is there, so there you go. So the SWR, uh, around about three, 3.1. I don't hopefully you can see that on camera there. I know it's difficult. Yeah, 3.02. So that's borderline dangerous. It's definitely kind of going up above three there. Um, not ideal. Absolutely, 2.9, it's dropped. So yeah, you might get away with that, but I wouldn't be happy with that long-term transmitting at SWR of 2.9. Okay, I assume let's go across to the uh, 70 centimeter band and it seems to be worse just looking at the screen there. 
and here we go let's go to the bottom part of the peak and 437 okay that is actually bang in the middle of the 70 centimeter band so that's 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 not bad but look at the SWR again 3.13 that's too high uh, yeah I wouldn't be happy with that at all and if I take it up to 446 or thereabouts which is what I would want to be SWR 3.6 yeah, it's, oh, it's better than my first result, but again, you know, guys, 3.6, that is a lot of reflected power back to the radio. That would definitely be in the red. So, yeah, I'm not all that happy with that. Um, better than before, but to me, that's still that's still out. Okay, I'm going to swap over now to the second fake 771, and we'll see if that does any better. Okay, here we go. Hopefully the focus is holding, so I've gone down to manual focus and right okay let's do the 70 centimeter band first and at the bottom of the peak there yeah that's coming in at 460 460 megahertz and swr of 2.1 so that is completely out of tune so if i go up to 435 well the other one did okay 430 i go to 437 swr 4.9 god it's almost five at 437 megs, we'll go to 433, bloody hell, 5.6, 5.7, that is really, really bad. And if I just go to 446, 3.18, okay, it's better, but that's still not as good. But you can see that's completely out of tune to the other fake antenna. Let's go and have a quick look at the two meter band. So you want about 145 megs. Let's go to the bottom part there. And again, it's high, 185. Yeah, these are different lengths, these antennas. Yes, SWR is pretty good, 1.48, but coming in at 185 megs. So if we take it to 145, it puts you bang in the middle of the two meter band there. Oh my God, 4.5, 4.5 on the uh, two meter band that again is that is dangerously high so this antenna is pretty dangerous to be honest i would not be happy putting that even on a, on a, on a bowfang radio so that one is completely tuned oh they were different lengths do you remember and this one is completely out of tune the first one was bad but this one is you know pretty bad so there you go okay let's uh let's test the standard bowfang antennas that i got with my uh, uv5rs and let's see if they do any better hopefully they will first up this is the earlier the slightly longer antenna that came with my original uv5r so again we'll do the two meter band first oh, and just get that down to 145 and that's not so good either is it so let's so on the bottom of that, at 149 megs, that's acceptable 1.8, 1.9. But if I go up to 145, 3.6. I don't know if you can see that, 3.61. Hmm, not sure. I mean, again, you know, the question with, with the Nano VNA, is it? It's not uh, three point. Okay, it's gone to three point seven, three and a half, three point three. It's coming down slightly. I'm gripping the. I'm holding on to the meter harder with my hands, which is probably increase. <laughs> it's probably going to break it, but it's probably increasing the ground plane. Okay, uh, I'm gripping that quite tightly now, and yeah, that has made a difference. That's gone down to three point one. It's still a bit too high. And if I release my grip, it shoots right up again. So yeah. If I put both my hands on it, okay, it does make it that does make a difference. If I've to, I can get that down to two point nine by really putting both my hands. I know you maybe can't see that, but I can. So I can get it below three if I really sort of hug the meter. But would you really hold a radio like that? And I know you're going to put it close to your head, so that might make a difference. Anyway, let's zip across to the seventy centimeter band. And it looks better straight away. I can see that on the uh, just on the scale there. So let's go to the lowest one first, and that's coming in at 419 meg. So that's a little low, and that's an SWR of 1.06. So that's pretty much bang on. So let's take it up to 430. 
going at 430, you can go 433, and SWR 1.57. And if I go at 433, I could have opened this out on a scale for more accuracy, but I wanted to get both bands in. I'm just holding on to that with both my hands there. And yeah, 1.5, 1.6. That's acceptable. That's perfectly fine. Again, if I was holding that closer to my head, more ground plane, that might improve things. 1.5, 1 1.6. Just moving up to 437. If we go to, can we go to 440. 442, 1.92, a little higher than I'd like, but okay, that, that's that's not too bad, okay, that's fine. But well, I'm going to swap to the uh, the second Bowfinger antenna now. This was the slightly smaller one, the one that came with my later camouflaged UV5R. Let's see how that gets on. Right, we've got that attached. So let's do the, uh, the 70 centimeters first. Let's go zip it down to 430, 428, 433. And once again, yeah, SWR 1.7, just going up to 1.8 now. If I hold on to that, it doesn't seem to make a great deal of difference, to be perfectly honest. 1.79, 1.85. Yeah, that's okay. The lowest point, again, according to this, is 419 megahertz at 1.09. So, yeah, okay. Now, I step up to 446, and let's see what it is on the PMR band. It's a little high to be honest. So PMR band 446, 3.0. Yeah, but I suppose if you went down, it's not really a PMR radio, is it? If you went down to the top of the 70 SEMs, 440 thereabouts, 2.13. It's a little bit high, you know. Okay, just going to zip along to the 2 metre band now. And it does look a little bit high to be honest. Right, we're at, uh, oh there you go, bang on, 145 megs there, and SWR of 2.3, and that 145 megs is right at the lowest point, so that is in perfect tune to, to the uh, 2 metre band there, 145, bang on. So yeah, it's in tune, SWR 1.9, yeah, a little bit hotter, Stop, just jumped over 2, I would like to see that a little bit lower, but like I say, if, if you had this close to close to your head, more body mass, more ground plane, might make a little bit of difference. But an SWR of 2, yeah, that's absolutely fine. That's completely sort of safe. Um, this isn't a Yesu antenna, is it? So, yeah, again, that would be perfectly okay. I think this antenna is safe. It's not going to damage the radio, and it is showing some very distinct troughs there, some very low peaks. Conclusion time. <laughs> what do you think of that? Will you let me know in the comments? This is all new to me. I'm, I'm just experimenting myself. So I think, yeah, definitely by attaching the antenna straight onto the meter there, and me holding it, ground plane, all of, all of that, certainly I think those were more accurate results, especially with the standard antennas. The standard Bofang antennas, even though they're, they're different lengths, seem to be perfectly safe pretty much on especially on the two meter band um, yeah pretty good for a cheap antenna the fake ones well once again um, the different lengths aren't they the I think it was the slightly shorter one was completely out of tune come tuning in at about 160 megs and then it was just too high it's, it's just completely out of tune the other one did it did better than the first test but I'm still not comfortable about putting these antennas even back on my UV5Rs, I don't want to be transmitting with an SWR of 3.54. It's just going to damage the radio, isn't it? It's just not sort of good enough. So, yeah, you know, I mean, I know these did better. My conclusion is the same. I still don't think these are a proper balanced tuned antenna. I think they're made at a cost, a very, very cheap Moving cost. Moving on, Mark left a comment. Cheers, Mark. Thank you very much. And Mark said that he'd bought these cheap fake antennas and he wasn't very happy with the performance. And he cut one in half. He, he sort of took this bottom section off. Now, when you think about this, you think of the length of this antenna, it's not long enough to be a quarter wave antenna. So there should be some coil loading or some kind of re a resistor or there's something. There's got to be some loading in the bottom section of this part of the antenna to make it work. But Mark said he took his apart and he found nothing. Just the wire was just soldered straight through to the center pin. I of think the I'll antenna. sacrifice one of these 
why not? So I think in another video coming up, I think I will break into this. I'll take this bottom part off and we'll actually have a look to see what's inside it. But personally, I think I think Mark's right. I don't think I'm going to find anything there. I think it's just going to sort of be a piece of piece of wire. I also want to test that extendable, that telescopic jaw band antenna as well, because I do think that probably will work sort of uh, quite well. But I think that's it, that's it, that concludes for this one. Um, as I say, you're learning with me. I, I know it's a bit of a slow process, but uh, yeah, that, that's how it goes on Fred in his shed, you all know that anyway. So uh, finally, I would just like to say thank you for your view time. If you found it interesting, give me the thumbs up. That always helps and I know you're then enjoying the videos and it encourages me to do more as well. But as for now, obviously COVID-19 situation, hopefully it's getting a little better, um, but all of you please stay safe, please stay indoors if possible, and look after each other, yeah? And cheers, thanks for watching, and of course I will catch you all on the next one. Stay safe.